Whatever happens next, Cain can make this choice. You know, this is going back to the James passage that we looked at. It's like, like what are your desires? What is it going to give birth to? Are you going to let that happen? Are you going to let this path unfold in front of you? This is your choice. What are you going to do? So that's the, that's the question of this story. You know, what is Cain going to do? His brother, and to rub it in, his younger brother, because always the younger ones get the blessings, right? His younger brother had been looked upon with favour, and he hadn't. Well, it's not fair. This isn't fair. So unfair. Well, possibly. I mean, I don't recall anybody ever saying life was fair. Um, but even fairness itself is quite an interesting concept. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of something called the, the Pareto Principle. There's a, an Italian economist, uh, many, many years, several centuries ago now, uh, what's, uh, Vilfredo, Vilfredo Pareto. Uh, and basically he did some studies and he basically found that 20% of the land in Italy, uh, sorry, no, 20% so, uh, of the people in Italy own 80% of the land. So, of course, you've probably heard of the, the famous 80-20 rule. Mm. Okay, and, and there's a whole variety of areas uh, that it applies. So, for example, you could say, well, 20% of people own 80% of the wealth. Um, in my own field, you could say, 20% uh, of the software bugs are responsible for 80% of the crashes. Okay, or in a company, 20% of the employees do 80% of the work. I mean, there, there's a whole variety uh, of areas that this uh, principle seems to apply. Now, what might be of interest to you is that there's actually another name for the Pareto Principle. It's also known as the Matthew Principle. Not because Matthew necessarily invented it, but uh, in Matthew 9.28, uh, we'll turn there in a moment, uh, basically it's the parable of the talents. Okay, and if you recall that uh, basically this man gave ten talents to one person and, and five to another and, and one to another and basically go ahead and use these talents. And the one who had a lot of talents went off and he generated a lot more. And the guy who had a, a, a smaller amount, he generated a, a smaller amount. And the guy who had one talent, he probably said, well, he basically didn't do anything with it. He was just like, oh, I took a hole in the ground and hit it. Okay, so, well, so I'll give you a talent and you just, you just wasted it. Yeah, that's, that's what I did. And so, here's what he says at the end of the parable. Verse 28, it says, Take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For everyone who has been given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not, even what he has, will be taken from him. So, again, at first glance, you read this, you say, well, hang on, the, so the Bible is basically being unfair. Because the Bible is saying that people who already have, they should be given more. Well, that's not fair. Well, perhaps it isn't fair when you think purely in monetary terms. But if you think practically, it's actually a very, very sensible solution. Because if somebody is given resources and they can produce many, many good things with them, and somebody given resources can't do anything with them, does it make sense to say, well, let's be fair about this and give everybody the same resources? Hmm. Well, I'm not sure if that's a good solution or not. Let's, let's make this a little bit more real. Uh, so we have a, a village, um, and we have two doctors. There is one highly skilled doctor, works very hard, <coughs> and there is one uh, well-meaning doctor, but hasn't studied quite so hard and tends to do a few more misdiagnoses than, than the other one. You're ill. Which doctor do you go to? Well, you go to the one who's actually very, very good. Which means the doctor who's very, very good continues to get more and more patients and continues to develop his skills and continues to gain more experience. He already has and he's been given more. Doesn't seem fair. Yes, it doesn't seem fair. But if you're ill and you need brain surgery, you go to the training. <laughs> Didn't think so. Everyone believes in fairness until it affects them. And then suddenly it's like, well, no, Joe, I kind of want the good doctor. <laughs> Actually, I know it's not fair, but I want the good one. It's like, you know, these guys looking after my pension, 
There's, there's the guy who, who, who failed GCSE maths and openly says, I'm not very good with numbers. And then there's the mathematic genius, okay? Look, I know it's not fair, but I kind of want a genius to look after my pension pot. Uh, it's not fair, I know, but I kind of want him to because he's going to do a better job with it. And, um, you know, this is, this, is, this is just a simple fact of life. Okay? It, it, it isn't fair, but there are varying degrees of competency in the world. I mean, so that, that, that's what it comes down to. There are varying degrees of competency in the world. Some people are good at other things. And some people are good at these things, and some people are good at those things. So you don't say, well, let's everybody equally all work on these same things. No, get the people who are good at these things to work on those things. And the people who are good at those things to work on those things. And, you know, what we all find is, is that things congregate among the highly skilled and the competent when it's working well. We're not going into corruption and all that kind of stuff. Okay. But when it works well, that's what uh, the, the principle is all about. So, why have, I, why have I segued onto this? Well, okay, so the reason is there are varying degrees of competency and what we seem to read from the story of Cain and Abel is that Abel uh, actually did a pretty good job of his sacrifice. Abel did a pretty good job of his sacrifice. He did his best and he brought it and it was accepted. And Cain didn't do his best. He brought it and it wasn't accepted and Cain was upset. Now, I think it's important, again, just to point out here, does that mean, therefore, Cain is now worth less than his brother? Okay? No. I mean, they're both still made in the image of God. Okay? So, this isn't about if people are worth more than others. But what it is about is that the person who is more competent was given additional blessing. There was something additional given because of their competency and their efforts and the fact that they did their best. So now the question becomes, great, so what can Cain do about this? What can Cain do? What can we do when somebody seems to be doing better at something than we are? Well, Cain's already been given the answer. He says, if you do what is right, won't you be, won't you be accepted? Well, the answer's right there. Cain, bro! Do what is right. Do your best. Make the best sacrifice you can. And, you know, I would like to think this hasn't been too controversial and that you're kind of agreeing that, yes, this seems like the straightforward solution to the problem. Do the best that you can. I don't even know why this point is ugly. Well, let's just finish the story. Now, Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? Well, I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? You see, it appears Cain decided not to master the sin that was crouching at his door. It appears that's the choice he's made. He says, my sacrifice has not been accepted. I haven't been looked upon favorably. Should I strive to be better? No, I'm going to kill the person who is better than me. Let me kill the one who did what was right. Don't aim higher. Bring everyone lower. And then there will be equality for all if you bring everyone lower. Kill them all, all the successful. They probably didn't deserve it, and it's not fair. You know, this is the way of Cain. Mm. This is the way of Cain. Whenever we allow rage and anger and jealousy to reign in our life, when we are not mastering these things, we are following the pattern set out for us by Cain. Mm. We're killing our brother. Whenever we see the righteous being blessed and we think, how can I bring them down? We're being just like Cain. We're being worse than bad. We're being ugly. Yeah. I mean, this is just like, this is, um, imagine a world where everybody who is successful is killed. Everybody who does something right is removed. What kind of hell on earth would that be? Yeah. 
it would, it, you would want to be killed because you would not want to live in that kind of place. It would just be, I mean, I don't know what hell's going to be like, but I think that would be a good description, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Everyone who's good and could do anything vaguely useful is removed. Wow. I mean, really. Wow. We need to be better than Ken. Okay? Actually, that should be, I should get t-shirts with that, shouldn't I? Be better than Ken. Yeah? Be better than Ken. Yeah. Alright? Because that's, uh, that's really what we need to do, right? If we do what is right, we will be accepted. Yeah. Okay? So, logically, why don't we aim to do what is right? Mm -hmm. Why don't we aim to be better? Why don't we aim to be on the correct side of that 80-20 principle? <coughs> don't be ugly. Whenever you see others being blessed, don't be ugly.